Hello everyone, this is Tommy at World at War Comics. We have another amazing interview to share with you today. But before I get into that, if you could give us a like, please subscribe. It'll keep you up to date with all the cool interviews and other things that we do on this channel. Um, but without further ado, today we have Jonathan Hedrick. He is a writer for comics like Dream Master through Black Box Comics, um, Capable, which is part of the Advent Comics um, family, and then the Recount, which is part of the Scouts comic. Um, you could go to jonathanhedrickcomics.com and see a lot of his self-published work, or you could go to blackboxcomics.net to see Dream Master, or you could go to adventcomics.com um, to check out Capable, which just came out. Um, but without further ado, here's my conversation with Jonathan. I hope you enjoy. Well, hello, Mr. Jonathan. Welcome to uh, the World at War Comics show. Really appreciate you joining us today. Yep. Thanks for having me on, Tom. Appreciate it. Right on. Well, let me uh, kind of share, you know, I was, uh, I'm always Googling stuff because I really love the indie comic scene. Obviously, I love uh, the big two as well. But mm -hmm. um, a lot of the stories that are taking place in indie comics just get me a little bit excited. Um, mm -hmm. You know, there's a lot of cool superhero stuff happening in indie, but there's also some other stories that are just real outside the box that I really enjoy. So I get on Google and I start mm -hmm. to search for other brands and I come ag across black box comics. So I mm -hmm. pick up, I think issue one of dream master, which nice. I found out you wrote and then I pick up a bunch of other cool stuff. Yeah. And uh, man, I just found this whole other universe that I, I really enjoyed. So cool. I reached out and I'm so glad that you responded, man. Yeah. I, what I'd like to do is uh, maybe start off. Where did your uh, passion for comics start in your life? You know, um, I grew up, uh, I'm a product of the 80s, so uh, Ninja Turtles was a big, Heck big yeah. thing, you know, me growing up, um, I was all in on the Turtles, you know, that <laughs> that, that cartoon hit hard, yeah. and I just couldn't get enough, you know, I, I had a, a different t-shirt for every day of the week, <laughs> you know, I, I had the, the bed sheets, the curtains, uh, <laughs> the toys, and then I remember one day at the grocery store, they had a um a spinner rack uh near the checkout counter. Oh yeah. And I and I never looked really looked at them much before, you know. Um, but I saw that Ninja Turtle uh Kong book and it was the uh, Ninja Turtle Adventures, which was you know, not the original you know, Eastman and Laird. Yeah, uh, you know, that wouldn't be on a spinner rack at a grocery store, but this yeah. was the adaptations of the cartoons in the comic book form. Nice. So I picked one of those up. Read it back and forth a thousand times, uh, rolled it up in my back pocket, strategically put it, uh, <laughs> you know, uh, walked around school to, so everyone knew I had it. And, um, <laughs> you know, I, I think through the turtles, I uh, pre I learned to appreciate that form of medium of storytelling. Yeah. You know? yeah. Uh, and, and then, you know, I, I waxed and waned, um, you know, uh, for a few years uh, at, in the comic book, you know reading comic books kind of casually um but then you know the batman adventure show hit and yeah. and, and then the x-men cartoon show hit and then yeah. spider-man and it was just it yeah. uh, that helped pull me and a few other kids that i hung out with it more into comic books because we loved those shows but that was before you could you know watch it over and over again you had to wait yeah. till the uh, a week to get the next episode a saturday morning right yeah <laughs> so we had you know in between you had the comic books and you know your friend would, would buy one and you'd buy the other and then you could swap yeah. um through that you know i started you learn more about like the continuity and the mythos of characters you, you find out it goes deeper than that um and you know as i got older i got into different things you know you know, all you know, superhero books that pulls in a lot of people in, into this, you know, into comic books, whether it's collecting, reading, or both. Um, but then, you know, I started discovering other things like the Sandman, Swamp yeah. Thing, uh, a lot of the darker stuff. And then more and more indie things just came into my life. And, uh, you know, uh, real good stuff started to hit. Uh, you know, it, Image started backing up from the um, other. Was all superhero stuff and they got more you know um uh, true indie stuff uh, uh like saga and the walking yeah. dead yeah. so um yeah uh and I, that segued in, into to writing uh several years ago I've, I've always been a writer um mm -hmm. in some form uh 
uh, you know, in school, you know, my uh, teachers would say, you know, Jonathan, you're really, really good at writing. You should do something with that. Yeah. But when you're, you're, when you're in middle school and high school, you know, you don't yeah. have a, a, your favorite writer, uh, <laughs> you know, a framed poster on the wall, you know, right, you, don't right. wanna, you know, you, you want to be a rock star or an, uh, you know, uh, an athlete or something. Yeah. yeah. So I didn't pay it any mind. But, uh, you know, I always was writing, you know, in, yeah. in, in the in those um, composition books. And I really didn't show it to anyone either. I just kind of did something. It was a way for me to get the, whatever I was thinking about in my head mm-hmm. put it in some format, whether it was prose or poem or short story and um, file it away into into nothingness. Yeah. But then I wanted to. Um, uh, I, I tried my hand at adapting a short story. Mm-hmm. into com- into a comic book script format and and once it was done i was like now what do i do with it yeah yeah uh, and then uh, you know that got me into you know self-publishing yeah what was your first uh published comic book jonathan would that be uh the recount the recount yeah the recount was mm-hmm. the first like published by a small press publisher okay um i self-published uh, uh two books before that and that was um uh, very first one was a, a zombie one shot called Freak Show Princess. Okay, yep. which went on to being published, mm-hmm. and then um, Capable Number One, which mm-hmm. is being pub- which is on pre order right now um, yep. through Advent Comics. So um, <clears throat> yeah, it, but Recount was the first like without contract signed, uh, yeah. you know, in diamond and all that yeah, stuff. So right here, right uh, oh, <laughs> there, you go. Yeah, <laughs> very yeah. Nice. yeah. Mm-hmm. You know, you kind of look familiar after I read this. I don't know if that was on purpose, but uh, I don't know if it's Christensen. Oh, yeah. The- <laughs> yeah. Wasn't meant to be me. <laughs> no, wasn't meant to be me. I'm looking at you like, wait a minute. <laughs> <laughs> no, no. <laughs> yeah. I do. I do have a cameo in recount number one, though, not, oh, not okay. the preamble. Gotcha. Yeah, okay. It, yeah. uh, Eagle eyed readers might find me in, in recount number one. So. Ooh, I have to relook yeah. at uh, that one. So, yeah. that's pretty awesome, man. Um, I know you were in the military, if I'm not correct, yes. the army. Yes. Yeah, I was, I was in the army. Uh, it was the shortest, longest three years of my life, is what I like to say. <laughs> you know I, I think mean? anybody who serves would say the exact same yeah. thing, right? Yeah. Did you serve as well? Unfortunately, I wasn't oh, okay. able to. I was born with a hip disease. I tried. Ah, my dad was a marine. Yeah. I went in to sign up and. I got yeah. through almost all of it until he did the physical and they're like, wait a minute, you've yeah. got some reconstructive hips here. We don't want any part of that. But yeah, I come from a long history mm-hmm. of people who have served. I got my mm-hmm. uncle's Bible and his fork that oh, he wow. carried around in the civil war oh, my God. Fought for the North. Wow. Yeah. So we got all wow. kinds of stuff throughout our house. It's awesome, man. But yeah, so when I saw that you served, and thank you for your service, by the yeah, way. Thank you. I, I appreciate your willingness to serve. That goes a long way too, you know? Yeah. Yeah. You know? Yeah. yeah. So I'm the gap in the family, man. So that's all right. All good. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> but when I was reading the recount, right. Um, yeah. I mean, I, I feel like maybe some of your experience was in there a little bit, maybe. Sure. Yeah. You know, I, I mean, uh, to, to a small degree, uh, yeah. uh the, uh, experience in, a uh, very institutionalized, mm-hmm. uh, governmental entity probably yeah. was pulled into that. Sure. No, no, nothing like you know the weapons training yeah, or yeah. Um, uh, the combat uh, training things like that. Mm-hmm. But uh, yeah, yeah, you know when 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 you're in at least for my experience, um, you're when you're in the military, you're really you're plugged into politics, whether you sure. like it or not. You know, have to be right. Exactly. You know, uh, it, it plays a big part in a lot of what you get impacted sooner when you're mm-hmm. living in the military by politics and you do a, as a civilian, I mean, there's yeah. the Agree. trickle down effect, but uh, it happens much quicker. You can see the changes in, in your life yeah. um, when, you know, po- politicians change. So I think that had, yeah, if you go from one there. president to another while you're serving, oh, yeah. you probably know exactly like instantly yep. like, Oh, philosophies are changing. Right. For sure. Yep. Yeah. So, yeah, yeah I, I think that uh, kind of, uh, um, led into into the series at some point or another for sure 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 so how many issues of recount is there i I just got the preamble so i'm gonna have to jump in on the issue one i did see it on your website so i have to go back and get that one yeah uh volume one is four issues okay um there was an ash can um with uh, four pages that 
uh, is is different content. It's not like the first four pages of issue one. Okay. Uh, that was collected in the trade paperback too. So, um, so uh, four issues in, mm -hmm. uh, in, in an ash can make up volume one. And then the preamble, which um, came afterwards, which serves as a yeah. one shot prequel mm -hmm. um, is out, you know, what, is what you have there. But yeah. Uh, yeah. And uh, uh, volume two is in the works. It's just, um, it's take, taking a long time to get it off the ground. <laughs> you know, it, it's been that little yeah. monkey on my back for, for a while. <laughs> Will that be through Scout as well? Yes. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Very cool. Um, un un unless the contract runs out and they, uh, they don't want me back. And yeah, it happens, right? Publisher. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> right. It happens, right? It, Maybe good. Black Box or uh, yeah. self publish, right? Yeah. Yeah. Exactly. Yeah. yeah. There's opportunities out there. For sure, for sure. Well, let, let's jump into Capable because I really enjoyed yeah. that one too. So we got the the Capable. Heck yeah. So you could go to Advent. I know Tony, um, amazing yes. guy, just incredible human totally. being. Yeah. yeah. And so, but I got this actually off of your website because I wanted it yeah. signed. That way, I right. could put it on my wall after this, right? So. And, and that's one of the last copies of the Kickstarter version. You know. Oh, uh, nice, so, sweet. So uh, that's not going to be printed anymore after you know Advent gets theirs. I rather you know Advent yeah. you know. Uh, they took a chance on me, a chance yeah. on, you know, um, it's part of their unbound, um, creator owned yeah. uh, imprint. You know, it's Advent has their Cosmos universe, which is like the self contained universe within mm -hmm. that publication. Right. But now they're doing this um, unbound, I, I guess, I think you would call, call it an imprint um, yeah. where it doesn't affect, you know, the other Advent titles. So they took a chance on me. I'm not going to print any more of those. Uh, self-published one so nice. uh, in, in a sense you know the yeah, you have a more rare copy with that but yeah i'm grateful that advent's going to be able to get it out there to a lot more more readers that aren't used to the the kickstarter platform for sure for sure so i mean let, let's talk about capable for a minute i mean it, yeah. it is it is more of a traditional superhero style of a of a yes. um comic book correct yeah it, it definitely has a lot of those typical super uh, hero tropes in it yeah but with a with, with a twist with the you know, twist for uh, sure right with, with, with <laughs> only a, certain with, people are affected right exactly and um so the elevator pitch is you know one day people all over the world with disabilities start to gain superpowers that are opposite of their um of their disability yeah. so uh and we see that impact in different ways yeah um and um yeah i'm super proud of, of, of capables uh i'm a proud parent of that series it's um a, a fan of you know miles morales spider-man and, yeah. and growing up reading uh impulse and, and the yeah. flash family and things like that um i just wanted to make a superhero a series that was different you know yeah. um and, and from day one i i sought out to make sure this wasn't a book um that was me pandering to the people with disabilities community right. and, yeah, and yeah. it doesn't serve to be that that way um and, it doesn't and come think, off that way either i don't think jonathan at i appreciate all. that yeah, yeah. No way. i never yeah, thought that once when i was reading it man awesome and, and i've got uh, a, a lot of similar feedback um that mm -hmm. you just said yeah. um you know my my editor um who edited everything but issue one she, uh, she has cerebral palsy. Mm -hmm. um, I, I've had beta readers from the PWD community, yeah. um, you know, read it before, uh, read issues beforehand. But That's you know, cool, they don't. Man. They also don't speak for that same everyone in yeah. that community. For sure, you know? for sure. So, yeah. But uh, I, I just, I just hope it's a um, people when people see capable on the shelf, they're like, you know, that that's different, you know. Yeah. Uh, yeah. and, and they can enjoy it for what it's worth, you know, mm -hmm. um, it's not an agenda book, just like the recount, you know, I had a yeah. lot of people coming after me, ha, <laughs> ah, coming, no. uh, that's going to happen no matter what. That's right. why you got to ignore Twitter, man. I love exactly. Twitter. I get on there. I post, <laughs> I jump. <laughs> oh yeah. Uh, you know, the, everyone has a sounding board now. So. Exactly. Yeah. Yeah. Everyone's an expert too. Oh, of so. course. Yeah. <laughs> But, yeah, no, but I, I really enjoyed Capable, man. And uh, thank you. You know, thank especially you. the very beginning, right? It's kind of a feel good story. All yeah. of a sudden, this uh, young man uh, hmm. is no longer bound to uh, his right. disability. But then it does have a little twist at the end, and it's yeah. it's not as uh, happy go lucky. <laughs> so right. I don't want to give anything away, mm -hmm. but it's definitely worth a read, man. I, I really thank enjoyed you. it. Can't wait thank to you. jump into issue two. Issue awesome. two isn't out yet, though, right? 
Uh, I mean, the crowd, the self-published one is out. Oh, okay. I self, I self-published one through five. Oh, gotcha. But, okay. um, uh, Advent um, right now is only it has issue one on pre-order, so issue okay. two should be in April. Okay. Um, the April catalog, and then Sweet. subsequent issues will follow. But um, so one through five will be the same um, uh, as the self-published versions, but with mm-hmm. a little tweak on the covers. And nice. then issues six and seven will only be released through Advent. So that, nice. that's a way, you know, for Advent to to, um, you know, not be just publishing the same thing, you know, right, that, right. That, that was kickstarted. But yeah, it, the every issue gets a little darker. That, and yeah, I, yeah. one of the shows that I I love the most is um, Breaking Bad. Oh and, yeah, Breaking that Bad show is amazing. <laughs> has a, a great, you know, be, different be, polar opposite from beginning <laughs> to end. You yeah. know, and and I I was very inspired by that with yeah. um and, and put a little bit of that into capable. So yeah, nice. it's it it begins a very typical superhuman story for the mm. super superheroes series. Yeah, with, you know I I did I took um things like um having you know a litter of name like his name mm. is Derek Davidson, just like mm. Clark Kent, Reed yeah. Richards, Peter Parker, you know things uh, things like that. I put I put yeah. in there. But it's it, but it's not hokey, you know. He doesn't yeah. um, uh, have a have a. No one has a superhero name or code yeah. name. None yeah. of them do, you know. Yeah. And they don't go back. They don't save the world and then go back into a disguise. You know, I yeah. thought that would be really cheesy and offensive if he, yeah. you know, has the superpowers, but then he you know went back into a wheelchair and, and pretended. I thought that was. I was like, no yeah. way, can't do yeah. it that way. So it's more yeah. of our world upside down after all these people have superpowers. Yeah. So, nah, cool it's concept. Su- super cool concept. <laughs> I really enjoyed it, man. I appreciate that. Yeah. Yeah. So let's, let's jump right into dream master. This is the, yeah, the yeah. most fresh that I've uh, read <laughs> from my friend. And right, I will right. tell you, man, I, I read the first one. I'm like, wait a minute. So I had to go back and read it again. Cause I was like, <laughs> Dude, this is a trip. And then yeah, I got into good. two and I'm like, well, these are like self contained stories. It seemed like yeah. you get to issue yeah. three and then it starts to right. tie things in. I'm like, all right, here we go. Yeah. So yeah, I, I, I read one through three um, just yesterday because they came in awesome. just a couple days ago. Um, so here they are right here for anybody else. I mean, you Perfect. could go to blackboxcomics.net and you can make your purchases yeah. right now. Um, and I think you're up to what issue five is it? No, it, issue for pre-orders. four. pre-orders. Yeah, or for pre-orders, yeah, you can get uh, issue five now okay. it, um, uh, through pre-order. Uh, and then we we take a hiatus before the next volume. Uh, gotcha. Okay. Uh, so that there will be a second volume. Um, but uh, you know, we're black boxes format is five issues at a time per volume. Mm-hmm. A hiatus while they put out a, another title, give them five issues, and yeah. then you know w- let the artwork catch up. Um, yeah. Instead of it's very tedious for an indie comic book to come out month to month like oh, you know, yeah. the big two. To, it, you have to be so far ahead. Yeah. And you have to uh, invest so much a- ahead of, of the game that it, it's better just to do it in, in, in these, you know, lumps of, you know, five issue arcs. So, yeah, but yeah, there's definitely more after issue five as well. Sweet, sweet. Yeah. So let, let's talk a little, let's get a little bit deeper into it. Um, yeah. All right. Where, where is this story coming from? Like so, the depths of uh, Jonathan. Man. Like, <laughs> right. Um. Black Box hired me to write Dream Master. It's not my IP. Oh, yeah, uh, okay. they, they gave me um, uh, about uh, a it's page Demetri- and a half. It is the one who had the idea, correct? Yes. Yep. yep. Demetrius, who, who's the CEO and, and publisher of Black Box, mm-hmm. he um, uh, created Dream Master, gave me about like a, a page and a half synopsis of what he was looking for, and then I fleshed it out. Yeah. And um, so I'm reading, you know, him and I talked be- way before – uh, he handed me Dream Master. Um, mm-hmm. you know, he scouts out talent, and, and then he's like, "Okay, I'll put that guy here when I have a, a thing for him." Um, mm-hmm. uh, we we talked about a year before I started working on Dream Master, and he's like, "What? What? what out of all the genres, which one do you lean towards the most?" And I'm like, hey, "You know, I really like to do horror. I, don't, I mm-hmm. mean, I, I've I've written across all the genres for the most yeah. part, uh, and I say that in a humble way. Um, but ho- horror is what I like." the most yeah. and he's like, okay when i have something in in, in that uh, speed for you we'll talk and then yeah. he, he gave me dream master um i read it and uh i thought 
This reminds me a lot of the character Roland Deschain from Stephen King's The Dark Tower. Mm. I'm a big fan of The Dark Tower. Uh, I have all the books back there. <laughs> you know, I read the comic books. Yeah. I, I've seen I've seen the movie uh, multiple times, uh, yeah. which is embarrassing to admit. That's um, all good, man. <laughs> <laughs> but um, I was like, you know, that it, it's not um, The Dark Tower and Dream Master. Uh, they're not it, it's horror but you know mm -hmm. horror has dozens and th hundreds of subgenres. Sure, uh, sure so it's like which which horror do you pick uh and i, I said you know we can, we can make a good horror fantasy out of yeah. this character you know he needs to be, go on like in a, an adventure and things happen to him because you know when we think of horror we think of Nightmare on Elm Street and yeah. fr Friday the 13th. Friday the 13th, yeah. Halloween, it, where the villain is the main character. You you know, yeah. you go to those movies because you because you want to see the villain. You yeah, go to see yeah. Scream because you want to see go the ghost face. Yeah. Uh, you could get, I, a gun to my head, I couldn't name any character <laughs> in the last Scream movie I saw. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> but I know the bad guy's name. Yeah, yeah. So, uh, so in Dream Master, you know, um, the our hero is our main character unlike a lot of horror stories yeah so yeah follow, that's right yeah. you know so so we we need to follow dream master and uh, and so let's make this you know a little fantasy base too mm -hmm. so I, I drew on and it was very inspired by the dark tower um and uh and then i i, I also pulled in a little bit of spawn you know because mm -hmm. uh, dream master he, he's uh rescuing dreamers in their nightmare but uh, the more he uses his own power, the less he knows of himself. Mm -hmm. So he gets creative within the dream. Yeah. Uh, uh, and, you know, we see him using uh, elements that are in inside that nightmare. Uh, but then he sometimes will, you know, tweak it a little bit. Uh, he, he risks losing a little bit of himself. And I mm -hmm. love that part of the character, you know. Yeah. Uh, the reader really gets to learn who Dream Master is while Dream mm -hmm. Master is learning it, too. So yeah. I think that that's really cool. That's a really cool concept. Um, we can sure. uh, uh, organically learn who this character is over time, and you and feel for him too. You know, sure, he's, un yeah. he, he's unsung. You know, he mm -hmm. uh, you wake up, you don't remember who the Dream Master is. You know, yeah. uh, but yeah. he's still he's still in there uh, doing his job. Yeah. So uh, it's a fun character, right? Yeah. Uh, and I'm blessed with the the creative team that that's you know on the book too. So that, that's that brings up a cool question, right? So we know recount you wrote that's your yeah. your story. Mm -hmm. Capable you wrote that's your story. Mm -hmm. yeah. But then you come to Black Box and Demetrius hands you a story that you could yeah. certainly develop and kind of make your own. Mm -hmm. But like, which do you prefer better? Do you kind of like having your own, or was it kind of yeah. a nice break of not having to come up with everything, but you know, come up with ideas that more enhance as opposed to develop? It, it's uh in my opinion it's much harder uh to write someone else's character mm -hmm. yeah, you know yeah. um uh i have to stay in their lane um yeah. but the reward for that is you know i don't have to be the project manager i don't have to fund <laughs> everything yeah that's uh, true it, um whereas you know when it's my ip it, in my book it, uh, and i created it, it all you know i'm funding everything i'm paying yeah. for the artwork the colors i'm tracking down everyone yeah. you know <laughs> looking for making sure everything running smoothly i have all the files um so it that burden you know was lifted off me so you know, i can just yeah. write um yeah so yeah it, it's challenging it's a different um you know writing process but uh yeah it, it was a good learning experience for me too because you know uh, I, I hope I can write other people's characters in, yeah. you know, in the future too. Yeah. So good, good, um, good, you know, stepping stone. Yeah. Probably good exercise too. And right. Sure. Strengthening a portion of writing that I don't think very many of us get to experience that often. Right. right. Mainly when we write, we're writing from the heart or from experience, which is yeah, still yeah. the heart. But this one, like you said, you're, there's guardrails, right? So you, right. you could go a little bit, but there's still guardrails you have to stay within. And that's a pretty, I think, good exercise. Yeah, yeah, de it definitely. You know, it's uh, a lot of things I wanted to pull the trigger on sooner uh, yeah. with Dream Master and, and Dimitri was like, no, we, we need to, we, we, so let's save that for down the road. Let's, yeah. You know, put that on the back burner. I'm like, oh, God, I really want to <laughs> do, that. do that now, but all right, fine. <laughs> 
Uh, yeah. which, which is great because it shows that you know he is invested in it too yeah you know, when he's like you know look, let's save that for something like issue 50 and i'm like issue 50 <laughs> <laughs> all right 50? You know? i'm not even gonna remember it by then eh? <laughs> <laughs> well, yeah, i better write that down you know yeah yeah uh, well, that, that's job security right there you know exactly. when someone tells you let's save that for issue 50 i'm like oh, okay <laughs> you know all right <laughs> and that guy pumps out all kinds of different ideas man Jeez. yeah yeah. yeah good yeah. yeah good on him and, and yeah. you know he uh, invested a lot to uh get where he's at right now that, that's not an easy feat you know a lot of these yeah. other small press um publishers have teams you know yeah you know, there's someone that's handling this and, and that and the other thing demetrius ha- he, he's doing it all you know yeah, yeah. Uh, yeah. So, that's good cool on him. man yeah well i mean we got dream master i know uh you're going to get to issue five and then you'll take mm. a little sabbatical as he yeah. focuses on other things mm. in between that. Do you have uh, something that you're working on that is self-published on, outside of dream master? Yes. Yeah. So I, I took the, since I'm about five issues ahead script wise from the art, you know, I have a, a little bit of a break from dream master. So I, I, I started um, a, a new um, creator owned series uh, that oh. I've been wanting to write um not quite uh ready to share the, no the problem, title yeah. or anything yeah for it, but um it's uh, uh, another genre i really haven't dipped my toes in uh and it, it's more of a dark romantic tragedy okay um and yeah I, I i decided to take it upon myself to change my writing process on this one too since i have hmm. the time and and it actually has provided me with um a way to not have to sit down and write so much at, at once, mm. but also get a lot done. And I, I've com- I've completed almost three scripts, twenty four page scripts already this calendar year. Oh wow! Uh, for that same title, so, yeah. And, and and I have art uh, starting on issue one. So I'm, I'm I'm fingers crossed. You know that uh, we see that uh, project sees um, the light of day in pu- the public eyes um, before mm-hmm. the end of, end of the year. Yeah, so, yeah, working on that. I did a, a a quick little eight page short story um for an anthology that I don't know if, if that anthology even exists yet. I just wanted okay. to have something done. Mm-hmm. If someone came up to me and said we I have an anthology, and I could be like, "Yep, you know, take this one. I already have it penciled, inked, colored, and lettered. Um, if it fits that anthology's theme, so, yeah." Um, that was that was unique for me too because uh, I've been in several anthologies and I kind of uh, I'm never prepared for it. It's more mm-hmm. like uh, you can be in this project, but uh, we need everything due in 30 days. <laughs> <laughs> like oh crap! Uh, <laughs> uh, but uh, that that it's that strangely has worked out. But I, I was like, let me get something out the way yeah. ahead of time. Worst case scenario, I put it up on my website for you know a, a dollar digital download or i yeah or it's a backup story in another comic book that i self-publish or it's a a stretch goal or something I, it, it'll sure. it'll find a place at some point so mm-hmm. that, that it's a cool little um twilight zone you know quick twilight zone story sweet um, i like uh i'm a big fan of twilight zone i oh, I, I, I i pull from that a lot you know I, I was one of those kids when Sci-Fi Channel first came out. All they had was Twilight Zone reruns. Yeah. Black and white. That's all you had. <laughs> yeah, yeah. So I was like watching that all day, all day long. Yeah, um, I was impacted big time by that too. The old yeah. black and white man. Oh, I have a, so a nightmare once in a while. There is one where this young guy is going through the mountains and he stops into a cafe, and uh, he has like a cup of coffee. And there's all these old people just sitting there having coffee. Gets yeah. in his car and he drives. And he keeps coming back to that same cafe yeah, and yeah. he's in this loop and he can't get out. Right, once right. in a while, I'll have a dream about him. Like, oh my God. <laughs> yeah, that's funny how some of them stick with you. They stick with yeah. you, man. It's crazy, man. But it, what a great show. Yeah, um, and so I'm good. sure it's impacted a lot of writers uh, later on in oh, their yeah. career, right? Oh, Some amazing definitely. stories. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. So will yeah. all these uh, self-published just be available on your own website then? Not necessarily, you know, if I'm, mm-hmm. I'm probably going to, uh, uh, you know, if I go the self-publishing route, I usually crowdfund over yeah, Kickstarter. Yep. Yeah, um, for sure. And and then, you know, after uh, whatever's left over from the inventory, you know, I, I put on, on my website afterwards. Yeah. You know, I, I have done, one, one time I did do a, a straight to my um, 
website um, comic book, and that was Quicksand number zero. Okay. So there's a Quicksand ash can. Now it's only been available on on my website. So mm. that, that's um, uh, and that worked out well. But uh, yeah. it, it's it's still it's kind of like really risky, you know. Yeah. Uh, yeah. Driving people to a very small website when yeah. Kickstarter has its you know platform and everything like sure. that. Um, yeah. and it's in its own risks as well but yeah. uh it's, it's something i wanted to produce a small amount of i only made a hundred copies of, of this oh, wow. uh issue zero mm -hmm. and um told people about it said it's only going to be on on the website and you know quicksand's also uh, on pre-order through scout but they don't even have that ash can it's truly oh, wow. jonathan hedger mm -hmm. uh, uh limited so I thought that was fun to do, you know, yeah. uh, that's, that's kind of things I appreciate as a comic book reader and collector sure. it, yeah. is that, you know, exclusiveness when some, when they say something's exclusive, I really want it to be exclusive. Yeah. I don't want it to be, you know, this is a, a, a retailer exclusive. We only printed a thousand copies. <laughs> <laughs> okay. A thousand. <laughs> wow. That was super <laughs> limited. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> <laughs> yeah yeah i mean kickstarter but, kind of changed the game for indie comic uh, creators did. right it's really yeah. helped and you know who your fans are right away before your product even comes sure. out pretty cool and you got a little network that you can start to build on and i find yeah. myself in there all the time just searching through going oh that looks mm -hmm. interesting let me back that yeah um, yeah so, it, it, it's a good testing ground and yeah. it, it and uh shows proof of concept to, yeah. to publishers uh, quicksand and capable were uh kickstarted and, and now they're both at different uh small press indie uh publishers yeah, so, yeah. you know it um why not you know sure <laughs> you sure know? Uh, yeah and, and then change things up a little bit give, give them a different you know covers polish it a little bit before um you know it gets sent to the small press and yeah before you know it you know uh, you have something else for the the fans you know to enjoy so exactly yeah, i'm glad i'm th very thankful i was able to do both for those two series yeah absolutely man absolutely mm -hmm. um what is your thoughts on the indie comic scene in general yeah uh man i mean i'm very grateful that the community is what it is um right now um for the most part you know, it, there's a lot of support um yep. it's, it's a huge network you know it, the um everyone knows everyone from a, at least like a two or three degree separation yeah. um but yeah it, it we're, I've, I've been saying for a while we're in a, a, a golden age of indie comics yeah. right now you know um no, nothing's stopping people from getting their comic books out anymore yeah you know, you, between publishing uh crowdfunding and, mm -hmm. and selling them from the out of the back of your trunk at the mall you know <laughs> exactly people, yeah. people can do it you know yeah you, yeah you, you can get your comic book out there you can get it seen um, a lot of people are, are going straight digital only, you know, webtoons and comicsology. I think yeah. that's great too. Um, there's there's a, a big a big place for digital comic books, and I, I'm a supporter of both. I prefer to read digitally, but I yeah. I still want a print copy. I'm yeah, one of those weirdos. <laughs> you know, I, I like reading on my iPad. Yeah, but I want that. Uh, keep that clean copy uh <laughs> in the bag and board you know yeah so, yeah for sure no I, I got comics laying all over the place man my wife's all yeah. you're disgusting man what's going yeah. on here I'm like <laughs> this bench right in here you know? <laughs> exactly man no nah, it's so enjoyable I, I do think like you said it is the golden age of indie and you know the top the big two will always be the big two i mean they got the yeah. ip with some amazing incredible and then you got image right which is kind of part right, of the right. like the big three i guess you could call it sure uh, they're mm -hmm. still independent, right? Because you're creator owned. But uh, yeah. but after that, man, it's it's a bunch of people that are producing some pretty incredible things. And right. you know, I I would much rather uh, I think write an indie story than try to create a, a ten part series for Superman oh, when yeah. when someone's been trying to write Superman for eighty years, right? And they've done yeah, an amazing right. job. But I would just think, man, to come up with another idea for Superman after eighty years. Yeah. I mean, luckily they had great writers that are able to do it, but I'm not sure I have that capability, man. But you get yeah, into yeah. indie, and I mean, Dream Master is not happening at DC or or Marvel, right, right. right? That's just not their their path, right? Nothing negative, yeah, yeah. it's just not what they do. And so, right. man, I just love indie for that reason. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I, I agree 100. You know, the uh, big two books serve a purpose. You know, mm -hmm. Thor comes out in the theater. 
You got yeah. a bunch of people that um, aren't aren't familiar with comic books. They go into the store. They're looking for Thor, and maybe you know they see Dream Master on the shelf. That looks yeah. cool too. I yeah, think they walk out with Thor, and they walk out with Dream Masters. Nothing sure. wrong with that, you know. Yeah. And, and then they sign up for a subscription. Yeah. Where you know That's it, you all have takes. A, you, <laughs> yep. <laughs> you have a new new comic book reader. So yeah, yeah. yeah keep keep bringing them in through Spider Man and Batman. Exactly. <laughs> Nothing wrong with that. That's free advertising, right? Exactly. Yeah, you know? yeah, yeah. Hmm. Well, very good, Mister Jonathan. Uh, I don't know Thank if there's you. anything else you want to share with the audience about um, Jonathan and what you're doing. I mean, you cover quite a yeah. bit, but I mean, Jonathan Hendrick, Hedrick, Jonathan Hedrick comics.com. Correct. Yes. Yeah. That's my website. Yeah. Uh, I, ha- I have a, a lot of stuff on inventory in my web store. Yeah. Um, you can find links to all my social media there. You got, you can find links to dream, uh, dream master stuff on black box. It can, yeah. It'll take you to scouts web store for recount and space cadet. My all ages book over at scout um pre-order capable and quicksand at your local comic book shop right now so absolutely man yeah. absolutely well jonathan thank you so much for joining us really appreciate it um as a fan of your work i, I appreciate uh, what you're putting out there thank and you. uh i really enjoyed the conversation man i, I hope we could do Likewise. this again uh, as soon as some of that that secret stuff that you can't share yet comes out, <laughs> <Right>. <laughs> I mean, I'd love to have you back on and, and share, you know, some of the other cool things that you're doing as a self publisher. Absolutely, you got it, Tommy. I appreciate it, man. Thanks for having right. me on. Thank you, man. Have a great one, Jonathan. Thanks you, again. You too. Thank you. All right, bye bye.